You're watching Telecom TV from TIP Summit 2019 in Amsterdam. Joining me now is Richard McKenzie, who's a principal researcher at BT. Richard, what are the benefits of a disaggregated radio access network? Well, there's, there's a number of benefits for disaggregated RAN. Um, and a lot of it comes from the fact we're centralising a lot of the radio processing. So, first of all, we're reducing the footprint of the actual cell site, so that can reduce costs of cell sites, which is one of the major costs. Um, then when we're centralising all of that processing to one location, that gives us a few benefits. So one is that we can do all the processing for several cell sites in a single location. So that sort of bandwidth pool, baseband pooling, that's really, really good for efficiencies. But there's also the radio performance benefits. All of those cells which might have been interfering with one another are now coordinated at a central location and so they can get better radio performance. What's the difference between an open RAN and a virtual VRAN? I'd say um, open RAN is the, the whole concept. So this is about the disaggregated RAN, the open architecture, open interfaces. Um, VRAN is, is a subset of that, that is the virtualization aspect. So that is turning the radio processing into a software function. And that's what we mean by virtualized. What work is BT doing with VRAN? So we're doing lots of things with VRAN. Uh, so within TIP, we're co-chairing the VRAN Frontal project. And that's, that's um, involved us hosting a TIP community lab and we've had three sets of activities in that lab. So we've done two multi-vendor VRAN solutions in that lab. And now we've also got some partners in to help us work on a management um, centralized controller for that VRAN. Um, as well as the VRAN Frontal work, we're, we're um, involved in Open RAN in general within TIP. And, and we're also now focusing on the commercialization. So, and actually moving on to trials, how can we deploy this? And one of the key use cases where we think we can deploy in the near term is neutral host. So that is where we have uh, an open RAN solution, but it's actually providing a service for all four of the UK operators. So how mature is the technology today? Um, well, I think 2020 is the year for VRAN or open RAN. It's, we've seen lots of things in the labs. We've seen things that are commercially ready components, but what we're now waiting to see is that full disaggregated RAN pieced together so that the end-to-end -end system is working. We've got a lot of trials going on. Obviously, you've seen Rakuten earlier. They're, they're talking a few months before they have all that launched. I think that the next year is, is the year for VRAN to go from potentially useful to being the way that we deploy radio networks. What progress are we making towards an open 5G RAN? Within, within TIP, we've got the, the Open RAN group, which is looking at 4G and 5G solutions. Within the um, VRAN Frontal project, we focused initially on just a 4G solution because we had a, a market for deployment um, sooner. But now we're turning our attentions to the next steps and one of those next steps is the, the 5G new radio version. Is there a difference in the approach we take when developing an open RAN for 4G as compared to a 5G open RAN? No, I don't think so. I think when we talk about a, a virtualized RAN, we also have a flexible RAN. We can reconfigure it. and having that flexible RAN is, is the important aspect here and making sure that we can do that for 4G, it's similar challenges for doing it for 5G. There can be additional things to consider when we deploy new radio, particularly in, in our case we, we use non-standalone architecture so we need a 4G base station and a new radio base station at the same time. So um, th there are extra challenges but nothing significant. And what's your message to the ecosystem, to vendors? Are they delivering the necessary requirements for BT? Well, I think they're, they're on track in general. But as I said, this, this year or next year is, is the year for VRAN to actually go into real deployments. And in a disaggregated RAN, we're assuming that it's not necessarily one partner producing all of those components in the RAN. So, we need, so the message to the vendors is, if you do this component, we need to make sure that we see you're working with the, the partners who do the other components so we can get the end-to-end -end RAN solution. Um, and we're, we're working with that with the plug fests, with the various project groups. We're making sure that there are opportunities and trial opportunities for the vendors to be involved. So they just have to um, look out for those opportunities and, and grab for them. Yeah. Richard, thank you very much indeed.